If you want to finally feel grown up from a girl to a woman, if you want to become that woman, you know, elegant, mature, magnetic, confident, then these are things that I think are kind of non-negotiables. Hello friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and uplevel their lives. So if that's something you wanna do, you should consider subscribing and sticking around. So I have eight different things that I really wanna talk about today that I think are all super relevant and crucial for stepping into that womanly version of yourself. You know, to start living fully in your that woman era. So let's dive in. So first things first, if you want to become that woman, this is very important, which is why I'm putting it first. This is a big one. You have to start taking accountability and responsibility for yourself. You have to start taking accountability for your actions. You have to start taking accountability in your relationships. You have to start taking accountability with your health and your healing. And you just have to start taking agency over your life. You know, owning up to your flaws and bringing awareness to the areas in your life that are hindering you, that are creating a struggle and identifying where you are creating that struggle. Now, just because you have flaws or areas where you struggle, it doesn't mean that you're broken. It doesn't mean Mean that you are a low quality woman. We all have things that we struggle with more than others, that's life. But you can't keep ignoring them or blaming them on other people or other things. You can't keep ignoring the fact that every time you get in a relationship, you cause lots of fights and drama because at a subconscious level, you like the chaos. You can't keep blaming all your dating problems on bad men. Sure, there are some bad men out there, no doubt about that. But you are the one who's choosing to spend time with them. You are the one who's hanging out with them on their couch every night when they haven't even asked you on a proper date. You are the one who's responding to their texts at midnight. You are the one who chooses not to walk away when all the red flags are there. You know, I'm just making up stories here, but even with our physical health, if your physical health is rapidly declining every single year, if you keep feeling crappier and crappier, you keep gaining weight that is clearly not healthy weight and you have no energy, sure, you can blame it on aging and getting older and that might play a very, very small part in it. Or maybe it's time to start taking accountability for how you're treating yourself or the fact that you're eating fast food every single day or the fact that your form of movement is moving from the bed to the couch. And same with our inner healing. Everyone has some sort of inner healing at least to some extent that needs to happen. And you can tell the difference between the people who take ownership over their healing and those who don't. Here's the thing, you are not responsible for what happened to you as a young girl or as a teenager. You are not responsible for how you were treated or how you were raised, but you are responsible as an adult, as a grown woman for healing that part of you and not letting it negatively affect you for the rest of your life. You have control over that. Don't think that you don't. Even if that just means having the maturity to accept and surrender to what happened in the past and letting it go so you can move on. To grow up, you have to start realizing that we have so much power and so much agency over our lives and we make choices every single day and those choices have consequences. And sometimes we make mistakes, sure, of course, and that'll keep happening. But consistently blaming other people or other things for the struggles in our life is one way that so many young women, not just young women, but people, even older people stay stuck in their life. They stay stuck in this immature state. They never grow and they never live up to their full potential because they are purposely, they are intentionally ignoring the role that they play in their own negative situations in their life because it stings a little bit when you realize it. But you can't really improve things in your life until you can first fully accept the reality of where you're at. It's not about hating yourself for your mistakes or your struggles. It's about loving yourself so much that you refuse to keep making life harder than it needs to be. It's about loving yourself so much that you refuse to keep living a life that is less than you deserve. And taking accountability and responsibility for yourself, even when it hurts sometimes, is one of the major keys to doing that. Now, number two, to become that woman, you have to start thinking for yourself and stop caring so much about what other people think. You have to start making your own decisions. You have to start being your own hype woman. And you have to stop relying on other people's opinions or other people's approval of you. This was a big one for me. When I was younger, I didn't really care that much about most people's, you know, opinions or thoughts of me, except for my mom. And I mean, of course she was my mom. Of course I cared, but I think I cared a little bit too much and I had to run everything by her. I wanted her to approve of every decision I was making. And again, you know, she was my mom. But when she passed away when I was 22, one of the hardest things for me was I no longer had someone telling me if this was a good idea or a bad idea, if my dress was cute or ugly, if I should do this or that. And all of a sudden, all I had was me. Don't get me wrong, I had other people in my life, but it was different because her opinion 
was the only real opinion I cared about. I remember planning my wedding without her thinking, you know, like, I don't know what flowers to pick. I don't know how I should do my hair. I don't know which kind of dress I should pick. And I had to start fully thinking for myself. And I was so anxious to like make all these decisions on my own, but I just had to start making them with my own thoughts and my own gut. I had to make the huge decision to quit my corporate job without her input. That was hard for me, but I learned to start trusting myself and to stop giving power away to other people. Not saying don't ask your mom for advice. Oftentimes moms really do know best, but I'm just saying through that process, through my own personal journey, I discovered a much more powerful side to myself where I grew confident enough to make my own decisions, to have my own beliefs, to look the way I wanna look, to value the things I wanna value. I might still ask for someone's thoughts or advice sometimes, but ultimately at the end of the day, I'm going to make my own decision. And I have built up enough confidence to feel comfortable with that and enough trust in myself that things will work out. To move from girl to woman and to become that woman, you have to start owning who you are, owning what you want and stop seeking approval and answers elsewhere. And so many people I've heard have said the same thing, where one of the best things about getting older is that you just don't care so much about what other people think. You tend to grow out of it. And it's totally true. It's a part of growing up and it's a necessary part of growing up. But you will likely always stay stuck in that girl mentality if your life and your well-being is dictated by what other people think or by what other people think you should do. You have to start trusting yourself and owning who you are. So number three, let's talk about sexuality for a little bit. This is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while, but I feel like this is a really good video for it to be in because to really like step into that womanly version of yourself, you have to start actually embracing and understanding your sexuality. And there is an epidemic of women who have completely lost their libido. Their sexual desire is out the window and they're just so disconnected and so out of touch from their natural sexual energy. And I know because I was one of them. I was one of those people who really, really struggled. Several years ago, my libido was like non-existent. It was literally at zero and I didn't really do anything about it for a while quite frankly, because I didn't know what to do about it. So I just kind of ignored it. I didn't know how to deal with it or improve it. So for like two years, it was just really, really bad. And then finally I was like, you know what? I am fixing this. This doesn't feel right. I know it's not right. And this is also not helping my relationships. So the next time I went to my doctor for another reason, I brought up the issue of my non-existent libido. And she basically told me to fake it till you make it. I left, went home and cried and I was very sad about that. I don't think I saw her again after that. I know she didn't have bad intentions with that statement, but this wasn't really a scenario or a situation where I could just fake it till you make it, you know? There are some situations where that works and this was just not one of them. And then a few weeks or months later, I don't know, I basically got the intuitive hit. Oh my goodness, it's my birth control pills. Like I already knew that birth control pills could cause low libido, but I didn't fully realize the impact that it could have on me. And then eventually I got off the pill. I was a little bit scared, but I was also mostly just really excited because I had just, I was over it. I wanted to be off of it. And I was already in the thick of my healing journey. I was already leaning towards like a holistic natural lifestyle. I wanted to stop taking synthetic hormones every day. So I was mostly just really excited. And long story short, it dramatically improved my situation. Now, of course, not overnight. Everything didn't just magically fix itself the minute I stopped taking it. I started taking birth control pills when I was 18 and I got off of them six years later. So I really kind of like became a woman through that time and I kind of had to relearn myself and relearn my sexuality again. And I kind of had to relearn like what kind of things got me going and what didn't because the birth control pills change that a little bit for me. Anyway, the point is, is that I know that there are a lot of women who struggle in this area of their life. I know that I was not the only one. I know there's a lot of women who struggle with low libido. There's a lot of women who just don't fully understand themselves in that way. And there's a lot of women who 
don't speak up and don't communicate their needs when things start feeling uncomfortable. But you might need to level up this area in your life. You might need to start getting more in tune with yourself. You might need to start getting more confident so you can comfortably speak up for yourself in this kind of way. You might need to start taking your power back in this area of your life. Also, just need to add this in here as a side note, not to say that if you're experiencing low libido, that means that you must have a problem, that you are broken. Here's the thing, men and women's sexuality is different and our sexual desire is much more sensitive and much more sensitive to how our partner behaves. So if our partner does things that makes us feel a little bit on edge, makes us feel like we can't really trust them, makes us feel like we can't really rely on them, like they don't have our best interest in mind, whether it's the big things or the little things, that can affect us and that can really tank our libido. I just wanted to make sure I communicated that sometimes low libido is not just this problem that we have. Sometimes it is, you know, like with me taking the birth control pills, my hormones were all out of whack. It was affecting my physical body, but sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's a sign from your body and your intuition saying, eh, I don't really like what's going on right here. Okay, but this is super interesting though. So you know how there's the five love languages? We all kind of know them like, you know, gifts, words of affirmation, physical touch, quality time. Well, there's something in regards to intimacy, like there's basically a five love languages or personality types, I should say, for your intimate self, for your sexual self. And it's very interesting. So there's this woman, her name is Jaya. Um, I don't know her or anything, but she has this quiz on her website where she can tell you what she calls your erotic blueprint, which is basically like your personality type for you know intimacy and, and sexuality. And I find that it's pretty accurate. I've done it myself and I've shared it with a ton of my friends. So I will link that quiz for you below in case you wanna take it and you know, get to know yourself a little bit better in this area. I think it's really helpful to know which one you are. And then she kind of gives you like some do's and some don'ts for each kind of like personality type. So I'll link it below. I am the energetic uh, erotic blueprint. So yeah, thought I would throw that in there. I feel like this is an area of our life that people just don't really talk about that much, even though it's important. You know, if you want to go from girl to woman, that might mean getting more in touch with yourself, getting more in tune with yourself, getting more in touch with that sexual, natural desire that we all have as human beings, if you feel disconnected from it. Okay, so this next one is a big one. And I think that this is a really common reason why so many women or, or girls tend to struggle to really grow up and embrace their womanly selves. And that's because, you know, society and culture and media has set this standard or this way of thinking that a woman is at her peak when she's 18 years old or something ridiculous like that. Society constantly perpetuates this idea that aging for a woman is very bad. That we need to look like our 18 year old self. That we need to have the skin of our 18 year old self forever. You know, no fine lines or wrinkles. That we need to have the body of our 18 year old self. There is this immense pressure to always look and stay young. And I think that this tends to translate to our mentality and our inner growth as well. We get this message from everywhere, even like catcalling, which nobody, you know, enjoys catcalling. But I read this statistic somewhere and I think it's like most catcalling in a woman's life or in a girl's life, I should say, happens between the ages of like 11 and 18 or something like that. I'm not exactly sure of the ages, but it's something like that. It's very young and all of these little things Things, they impact us, they make an imprint on us, and they teach us that once we become a grown woman, we start to lose value. That our value is in our childlike girl self. And that is ridiculous. I just think that these subconscious, you know, societal standards can really hold us back from growing up into that mature woman. We have to move on from that. We have to start seeing the beauty in growing older. We have to start seeing the beauty in gaining more wisdom, more confidence, more elegance, more maturity. Now that doesn't mean that we have to lose our playfulness or our youthfulness. It doesn't mean that we should stop doing the things we loved when we were younger. It just means being able to see the beauty in being a real grown woman as opposed to always trying to stay perpetually young. Next tip to go from girl to woman is to stop dressing so much based off of trends 
and to dress off of what you want, what looks good on you, what you like to wear, what suits your body, what flatters you. Some trends will really suit certain people and others will not. Not that trends aren't fun. I think that they are and they can make getting dressed and getting ready in the morning more enjoyable. But at the same time, when you grow into a more mature, elegant woman, you have to start understanding what looks good on your body and what doesn't look as good on your body. What colors flatter you and what colors don't flatter you. What styles accentuate your beauty and which styles don't. And just prioritizing wearing clothes that fit you and flatter you over clothes that are just in right now. And I know a lot of people say that when you get older, when you become a woman, you want to embrace your elegance that you need to find your own personal style. And you kind of have to create that personal brand and stick to it. But to be honest, I think that that sounds incredibly boring. I do not want to have the same exact style every single day. Sometimes I wake up and I want to be in my sultry, dark feminine era. Other days I wake up and I want to be, you know, have soft housewife vibes. Other days I want to be preppy. Other days I want to be sporty. Other days I want to be coastal grandma chic, right? It changes daily and I love that part about being a woman. One thing I heard before that sounds so fun is instead of organizing your closet by like, you know, short sleeves, long sleeves, pants, is to organize your closet closet instead by archetype or like energy. And I think that that sounds really interesting. I haven't done that, but I might do that one day in the future. So I don't think that you have to have this exact personal style that you stick to all the time to like really embrace your mature womanliness. I think it's more about knowing what looks good on you, knowing what you like, knowing what you don't like, what styles, what colors amplify your radiance and which ones don't. And then using that to kind of guide you and to style you from there, not necessarily dressing yourself just based off of what's popular or what is trending right now. Next, number six, a grown woman has a sense of assertiveness, standards, and boundaries and can speak her mind when she needs to. Now that doesn't mean that she can't be soft. She totally can. Having that gentle feminine softness is not the same thing as being a people pleaser or having people walk all over you or not communicating your needs because you're insecure. That's totally different. At a certain point, you have to start knowing who you are and knowing your worth. And you might have to start setting standards and boundaries that protect that. Sometimes that might mean speaking up, even when it's uncomfortable, even if you are naturally a very shy, soft woman. If something isn't right, you can say so. You know, even the littlest things. If you go to a restaurant and you ask for lemon water and they just give you plain water, you can ask for the lemons again. You can speak up or to the big things like your partner out of the blue says this weird disrespectful remark. It's okay to be direct and communicate your boundary. It's okay to be like, that's not okay. It doesn't make you annoying or a problem or crazy. It means you respect yourself. And I think sometimes when people think of being assertive and speaking up, they also equate this with like, aggression, like that they are one and the same, but being assertive and being aggressive are two very different things. And if you approach your assertiveness with love and kindness, it's much more likely to be well-received. As a grown woman, that self-respect is a non-negotiable and you have to start feeling comfortable speaking up for yourself when you need to, because inevitably there will be moments where you need to. Next habit to become that woman. I think there comes a time in every woman's life, maybe like around, you know, age 25 or maybe earlier for some people where they just decide, I really want to take care of my home better. I want to really beautify my home. I live here. I sleep here. I want to make it beautiful. I want it to be clean. I want it to be organized. I want to take care of it. I want to nurture it. I want to love on it. To me, I think that's a part of growing up from a girl to a woman just realizing the importance of the care and love you put into your space, whether that's your home or your apartment or even just your own little bedroom. It doesn't mean that to be that woman, your home has to look a certain way or have a certain aesthetic or be a certain amount of square feet. That's not relevance. It's the energy and love she puts into her home because she wants to feel at peace there. And it's this grown up realization that like the space you live in matters, the energy that you live in matters and that you can feel joy and satisfaction from the little moments of like adding flowers to your coffee table or cleaning up and tidying your bedroom or cleaning off the counters in your kitchen. There's something very beautiful and mature about that. 
Now, the last point I want to make is that a grown woman knows the value of her female friendships and puts in effort to maintain them. Now, obviously, sometimes friends grow apart and that's okay. Not every friendship is meant to last a lifetime, but you also can't use that as an excuse for why you never see your friends anymore. When you become an adult, it takes more effort to maintain relationships and it takes more effort to make new friendships too. But there is so much value in having close girlfriends in your life. You need that feminine energy from other women. It is very healing. And by the way, like as you grow older, it's really common that your friendship circle gets smaller and that's okay. Oftentimes as we grow older, we just realize the importance of prioritizing authentic, meaningful connections over superficial ones. In my opinion, I think it's way better to have two really close girlfriends who you know you could trust, who you can really depend on. You know, you can call them when something amazing, exciting happens, or you can call them when you pop a tire at 11 at night versus having 10 friends who you don't even fully really know and don't fully connect with. But as women, we are meant to live with community with one another. That's how our ancestors have always lived and our DNA still wants that. Having a community of women in our lives is crucial to our own well-being and happiness. But I know that sometimes making friends is not always easy, especially if you're moving to a new city or your friends move away for whatever reason. But if you feel like you don't have any real friends or you just kind of struggle in this area of your life, definitely recommend you go watch this video how to make good female friendships. It's an older video of mine, it just has some super practical, actionable advice and tips for how to make good female friendships because that community is so important. So thanks so much for watching and spending time with me. I will see you over there or I will see you next time. Bye.